What's up guys, welcome to episode four in the gc 8 engine bay harness series. Last episode, we finished branching and sheathing the entire harness and off camera, Yotam added some potting compound to the main branching point of the harness. Give it that nice professional looking finish. If you're just tuning in, I recommend going back, watching the first three episodes in order to fill in the gap on all the little details and everything we've done up until this point. In this episode, we are going to complete the harness. That means crimping connectors, final booting, and labeling. Your time will then give us a short explanation on the different crimping options available on the market and the differences between them. And then it is on to the cabin side of the harness. So it's going to be an exciting one. Hope you enjoy. Right, engine bay harness is now complete. All the connectors have been terminated. Everything has been labeled. So we have things like the AC, starter motor, alternator, fuel pressure, the GC journey, drive-by wire. So as you can see, we have quite the wide range of connectors throughout the harness. And when it comes to crimping connectors, you really wanna make sure that you're getting consistent and reliable crimps in all of your connectors. And in order to get a better understanding of how to do so, it is over to our crimping wizard who will be sharing from his experience all the way from over here. So your thumb, I bought this perfectly capable, complete Deutsch crimping set. And you said that you would not be using it for this harness. And I wanna ask why? I knew you were going to ask that. So I made a few test pieces to show you. I will show you why my cream tool is better than your cheap <laughs> <laughs> So first of all, I've made a few test pieces that you can see. Both of the, these pins are DTM connectors. Let me give you the first test pieces. You will tell me the differences. I would say it looks like the indentations on this crimp are more spread out and these are more like uh, Compressed. Compressed, yeah. First of all, I will tell you that this test piece yes. is prov proof that you can use both of the crimp tools. If you will try to pull those apart, you will see that they are not taken apart. The crimp tool, the cheap crimp tool, did his job and the crimp is fine. But my crimp tool is calibrated. In that tool, we can set the correct wire gauge. We also have a gauge for this turret for different contact sizes, for different connectors. You can set the correct wire gauge to the correct pin that you are using mm -hmm. in this turret. And you can, make, you can be sure that it will never escape from the, connect, from the connector and from the pin. But also, this tool is calibrated from the manufacture of those pins to have the correct clamping force for those pins. You can be sure that you are, you are clamping those pins in the way the manufacturer intended. But then again, if we were to use 24 gauge test cell wire, take this 24 gauge. You can clearly see that the crimp tool didn't crimp as far as we wanted to. Uh, in my crimp tool, you, will, you won't be uh, having this issue. So the, the, the Deutsch crimping kit that I bought, you're more restricted with the range of contacts and wire gauge combination. It is able to reliably crimp rather than if you're using the professional tool, then you can use a much wider range that uh, the manufacturer specified. You can have, you can use Deutsch crimping tools, but then if you're going to use it, you have to know the limitations of the, of the tool. 
Mm -hmm. You have to know that you can crimp only uh, that amount of wires, that amount of, uh, let's say, ga wire gauge. You can't go uh, wild with wire, wire specifications. Mm -hmm. You have to use, let's say, tw in DTM, 20 to, uh, to 22 gauge wires, not more, not less. Mm -hmm. And uh, in DT, 18, 20 gauge, you can't go lower, you can't go higher. Uh -huh. All right. Understood. So I hope that answers some of your questions regarding the differences between the professional crimping tools and the more affordable ones you can buy online. So moving on. So basically now that the engine bay harness is complete, we are now going to move on to the cabin side of the harness. Now it's pretty much the same process. I mean, it's preparing the wires, populating the connector, sheathing, branching, everything needs branching. And so let's quickly run through that process and we'll continue from there. There are a few small differences when it comes to the cabin side harness. On one hand, there's less branching to do since most of the wires will either go to the ECU, fuse box, or the gauge cluster. On the other hand, there are some upgrades that will be later fitted that need to be taken into consideration. For example, while there's no need for canvas communication inside the engine bay in this specific application, and in general, canvas was only used in later Subaru models, we'll be adding some new features to this GC, and so we'll need canvas wires in order to accommodate them. So it's the same preparing the wires, populating the connector, twisting the harness, branching out things like the accelerator pedal, wires going to the gauge cluster, etc. Sheathing, booting, and now we have a cabin side harness that only needs terminating connectors. Simple. Okay, so cabin side harness is almost complete. So that pretty much concludes this series. We've, uh, we've now come to the closing episode. I can say that uh, I've learned a lot from this experience of uh, constructing a new engine bay harness. I feel that uh, there are definitely a lot of things that I would have not have been able to do if this was my first harness. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't attempt building a harness like this if it's my first one. The first harness I ever made or my first wiring job was constructing a coil conversion loom for my car. And so if you're just getting into wiring, start with something simple. For those of you who are looking to get your foot in the door of the motorsport wiring world, then I recommend checking out the HP Academy website. I'll have links for their wiring courses in the description below and you can use a $50 discount code that I will also leave in the description. And we, we still have some things to do. I mean, we need to complete the cabin side harness, then we need to fit it in the car, and then we're doing the fuse box delete. And of course, let's not forget, for those of you who attended the live Q&A that I did, you will know that we have an ECU Masters CAN bus keypad that we're also fitting into the GC. So a lot of exciting things. I'm really looking forward to them. Hope you are too. Gonna make the GC a little more modern. Anyway, with that, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, see you in the next one.